Hey guys, you're working here, and welcome back to my FIFA uh, 17 Liverpool Grim. But this is the second of the double upload I had promised after missing uploading the video that went up this morning on Tuesday. Thursday, sorry. Yeah, mixing days. And for a record, yes, there will be a double upload tomorrow. Oh, of Uncharted, and there will be a double upload what, on Monday of of my PSV secondary career mode. In case you missed, Alan Smith is with yesterday's me. Tyler. delighted to have your company for this match today. Video where I did explain it. This was the oh, last you know. game of the 2013-14 morning season for both these clubs, wasn't it? And Newcastle actually went in front at Anfield. Liverpool got the so, win, but they didn't get the title. Game against no, Newcastle at St. James's quite. Park. So, uh, I think they'll be looking forward into the course, future with optimism. Will be happening a great deal of it. In the FIFA As for season, because uh, many people thought they would, Newcastle have backs. come neatly back to the Premier field. League after and only one season in the, in the championship. And now we know all three teams who will be in the next season. As the wide defenders, Ali starts with Brighton, who were already confirmed, and Hudders joins up top with Divock, who won the playoff final. And as much as I wish Reading had won it, I'll give Hartsfield the benefit credit that they deserve and say well done and well into the tackle. Into the and the result is going to be a throw. I wish Hill fans, Brighton fans and Newcastle fans all the best in surviving. Because, mm. you know, when, it, when teams come up from the championship, they're normally going to be instantly the first teams on the chopping block for anyone. Guaranteed, you can, if you watch people who predict where they think teams will finish in the league, they will, so, the majority will, will place one of, if not both, of Huddersfield and Brighton in the relegation zone. I think Brighton could easily replicate what, hey, um, what uh, Burnley did this season, this past season, and just gone. And that's comfortably. Well. Well, they stayed up, you know. For a, thanks to their home form, their terrible away form didn't really matter. So. If Brighton can, or Huddersfield, could he really use this to their advantage and turn, turn their, their, against West Bromwich Albion. Yeah, the first day moves into the fortresses. As for Newcastle, well, the question is, what, how will they? Now they've got a chance he, in this part of the pitch. He did. He's got his shot off now. Great effort. Clipping the top of the bar. Listening to the true joke, Freddy just talking about Newcastle all through his, his football hangovers. Just, you get this sense of how bad Newcastle were. Or, or, as someone who didn't obviously watch Newcastle every week. Getting a fan's perspective is actually he was actually a really aisle theme. It really makes you think. Because you know? a fan will notice something that someone who's watching from an opposition point of view who twice a season may not notice. Attacking here might be a chance for Newcastle. And Newcastle's awful, awful 
for record of transfers under Mike Ashley. Rafa Benitez did well, but he did well for the championship. Now, Rafa Benitez is somewhat of a big man. Name man. Nigeria having won mm, trophies at Liverpool, Chelsea, he, he Valencia. Uh, you can't. And, and Newcastle, technically, he has won a trophy. Goalkeeper he, is there for him, and he's it to him. Mike Ashley would. Not have you believe that because he said he would leave if Newcastle did win something, which they did. And I don't think Newcastle are for sale now. I, I just, I just don't get that feeling. I don't know. But anyway, what what Newcastle will fans will probably agree with me on is what Newcastle don't want to do is they do not. They have to absolutely not do this, make the same mistakes again. None of this going to the French League and buying people who could be talented. Well away from the dangers. That's all well and good, but you have to bring in and play other players as well. well you can't knock him. He was in the right place at the right time. Cool. The constant thing that, uh, again, I go back to the true joke, or the true football hangovers, he was always calling out for Premier League proven players. Oops. Now, I don't, I don't know where the Newcastle weaknesses would be, because I... I, I, I watched a handful of Newcastle games, and even at that, I didn't watch all of them. So, I wouldn't know how they... Like, obviously, I know they got promoted, but I wouldn't know where they struggled in the championship. Such a wet day. I wouldn't know... Through half time as well. we just have to see what I'll say is... Take. They should at least get... A Premier League proven midfielder, defender, and a striker. Because of the tackle that sent the ball behind. I know they have Dwight Gale, oh, who has a bit of Premier League experience with Crystal Palace. But getting another wouldn't hurt. You know? It would only heighten their chances of survival. A midfielder? Huh? Sort of like most of that decision. someone who well, maybe you could get someone with John Joe Shelby's level it. of experience, considering Shelby has played with in the Premier League with Liverpool, Swansea, and Newcastle before they got relegated. So if if you could, if Newcastle could get someone of that level of experience, maybe a little bit better than John Joe Shelby, you know. It's a heading chance now. Well, Newcastle fans are 50-50 seemingly with Shelby. One week they love him, the next week he can play terrible. And it's now with Liverpool. Attacking now. I <laughs> you know that, that could sum up any player, but... Coutinho! Great work by the goalkeeper. <laughs> Great hands. I, I just get that, got that vibe. Heap this season. So if they could get that, that would help. A and a defender. The they still got the ball. Like, Good play. Look at Newcastle. I, I look at the, Newcastle's uh, defense. I'm trying to think of a player in their defense who's primarily proven in in in, in their actual defense. He's got it away. Like, that's what you have to do. Well, here's a chance who? to get their noses in front of the I, 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 I don't know. Excellent Maybe they'll go for a goalkeeper as well, I don't know. Well, Krul was out on loan last season, which I know from uh, the game. Um, I'm 
because you can find him uh, I can't remember what Dutch site it was, but I know he was well, over in the area of Izzy the, uh, the on a loan. I'm guessing it was like just a one season loan because well, he just didn't want to play in the championship and Newcastle didn't want to sell him. So does that mean Tim Crew will be back in goal for Newcastle? Come has paid off finally. Hmm. Well it's a goal worth replaying over and over again, isn't it? I I honestly don't know. I mean we'll we'll see, but is that what Newcastle need? Honestly, it's it's a big question mark. Newcastle need to make the right signs, and you don't need to tell a Newcastle fan that. You really don't. They they know it all too well. They've they've seen some shambolic signs. Like, yeah, I mean, I think we thought coming into this match, Martin. Yeah, Newcastle are not saying world cup as players, but I don't, I, I don't think the Newcastle fans are expecting world class players. They're just expecting good enough players, players who make them a, a top ten team in the Premier League. Have a look at that, the corner count. Under Rafa Benitez, if he's given the money and the spending power and the power in the transfer window, I think he could turn Newcastle easily into a top 10 team, even have them challenging for European football. But he has to get the... Newcastle, their man foul. He control that he needs and I don't think he has it we, we all heard here we're going to have a substitution at the end of the season when Newcastle went down initially that all the rumors were saying that Benitez was going to stay if he got control of transfers then January comes around and Newcastle sign absolutely no one, to my knowledge. And I think they did actually sign no one because, again, I go back to Trujuri. He was very, very, very angry about that. As a Liverpool, fan, I can understand your team. Not spending in January because Liverpool didn't do anything in January either. We have got four added. We, we got away hey with it you know, to some extent, so did Newcastle. But from what I can, could gather, Jordy was more worried about well, the following season rather than the remainder of the championship season. I think all Newcastle fans were expecting them to go up. I think everyone was expecting Newcastle to go up, and in fact, they did. Yeah, they won the league, like I said. Um, Bournemouth. It's one. now. Two. It's a question Leicester of City, two. does Rafa Benitez have the power that he needs? He should have it, one. but does he Newcastle have it? United, nil. And I, I'm one. gonna say he doesn't. I really Not feel Newcastle, like he one. doesn't. Have the control that United won. He, like, I think he did initially get it, but then once, obviously, once he stayed, now he's got Newcastle back to the Prem. In second, Tottenham Hotspur with six. Here, I could see this happening. Newcastle will go up to the Prem. They sign. With and some players, but in you know, rising up the table, they might Palace with he fall into the same pitfall of signing useless table, players or signing young players who, who could be a superstar or, or 
or Frank kids who no one's ever fucking heard of. Bottom of the table, Watford with 19 points. I don't even need to na names. Newcastle fans know who I'm talking about. But here's what I can see, and this is. I, I really hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. Newcastle, start off. This is purely, purely something I just have a bad feeling about. But I could see Newcastle, if they don't sign the right players, starting off the league very badly. A few draws and maybe a few losses. And what if Mike Ashley sees this and decides... He wants to get rid of Rafa Benitez. That could happen. And this might sound weird. I I have no who leg for this argument to stand on. But I have I, I, I don't know why, but I have a little bit of a feeling that Newcastle fans might have that horrible scenario in the back of their head. Like, it's a it's the worst possible what-if scenario that they don't want any part of. Now, the question is... Actually, sorry, scratch that. Um, not the question. The, 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 th the fact is, if Rafnitas gets sacked, who are Newcastle gonna get? Will they go out and get a North for Champions League winning manager? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this was a one-off. Now, Newcastle could be absolutely hungry to prove that they should never have gotten relegated initially. And when they come up from the championship and the start of the season, they'll be on fire. Banging goals, getting wins. And it'll all be rosy. Or it could be very bad. They're not winning games. They're not. This is the Liverpool side. Well, they're getting joke, all it? sorts of Diamonds aren't forever, but battle. For this game, huh. anyway, for this uh, I just, I don't think the fans would ever turn on Rafa Benitez, but it's not the fans that are, could be the, would be the deciding factor. Like, and there was no one left. the fans wanted that Alan Pardew gone for ages. And it was only thanks to Crystal Palace that he even left Newcastle because Palace came in and said um, can we have him and Mike Ashley said yeah what was Mike Ashley's response Pardew's gone but I'll appoint John Carver and then Steve McLaren Leo Baptistel is coming forward you just like, um, I'm sorry, what? No. And by the time he appointed Rafnitas, I think everyone was like, Steadily here, keeping possession. It's too late. It's too late, the damage is all but done. The question is, Ashley was really slow to react with Pardew because he liked Pardew. I get the feeling that he doesn't like Benitez. He's only working with him because he had to. And I think if results in the Premier League start going against Newcastle and they start looking like they're going immediately back down to the championship. I don't want to put that idea in Newcastle's 
fan's head. But if it looks like it's going that way, I could see Ashley just cutting Rafa Benitez. And then he'll bring in a manager he likes. And Newcastle fans, maybe this new manager will get you server. Well, maybe he won't. It'll depend on who it is. But then you have to worry, will this guy become the new who Alan Pardew? Will he be the new John Carver? Will he be Steve McLaren in 2.0? Will he be... Hopefully, Raptanitas saw the pass coming and got will, first. will get the support he he should get. I know he'll get it from the Newcastle fans, but whether he'll get it from the Newcastle owner is another question. And that could be the decisive factor on whether Newcastle stay in the Premier League and flourish or crash and burn once again. throw out for a throw and uh, over the touchline it's, it's just it, it's, it's the slight there is the slight possibility Shots on here. and like I said I don't want to put that into Newcastle fans head but you look at it you have to think when the rain comes Would Mike Ashley do that? And he seems like a, a fucking asshole. Like, he seems like an absolute prick of a guy. He just seems like he you just wouldn't want to work for him. In this part of the pitch, it comes a challenge. He's a bit egotistical. He seems to care more about himself than the club. It's, it's just a bad situation. Get the advantage. A really, really They've bad a situation. Piece specialist, haven't they? And this might just suit him. And as I mentioned before, actually said he'll only leave when, when Newcastle win a trophy. And here's the header. Well, fantastic goal. What are Newcastle going to win? Like. For goalkeepers, heroes, or zeros, it is maybe Rafa Benitez well, he left his post, should outside the six yard box and it was a port pile on the focus in the cup ups next season and try. I, f I could see Newcastle winning the Capital One Cup if they really if Rafa Benitez puts his time and effort into winning the cup. Liverpool are really on top form in this first half. It may be the only thing that can help Newcastle. Martin Kelly. Because James McCarthy. Mike Ashley is a man of his words. Which makes a challenge. It's hard here. to know whether you can trust him or not. Just I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw him. This situation. And I'm not saying that because he's a fat. To the fuck. I'm saying in that. Like. If I could pick him up and throw him as far as China, huh, I would still not trust him. Return ball. So that's the thing. Here's Emery Moore, Daniel Sturridge. And the ball has gone up to indicate three added minutes. Three minutes. I mean time. Pizarro. Kabai. Good first half in the quarterfinal. I think I've uh, talked enough about the Jordies. I think I've gone through what will be a Newcastle fan of mine. Now it's time to go again for the and second 45 minutes. Like Huddersfield and Mike Brighton, I wish them all the best of luck. In the first half, and you wonder if 
whether we're going to see some tired legs as the second half wears on. And hopefully Newcastle won't make the same mistakes again. Typified then again, competitive nature of this game, that will Rafa Benitez be calling the shots in the Premier League? Or will Mike Ashley be calling the shots in the Premier League? Patience is the name of the game at the moment. Comes in strongly. Good play, but they've lost the ball now, and the opposition can get at them. Good forward play from them, and he could get away here. And now the shot. Oh, well, so anyway, I'm uh, going to turn my focus to the uh, game I'm playing. 3 0 up here against Crystal Palace in the uh, I don't know whether it was FA Cup. <laughs> It didn't quite look right. Well, it, whether it was rehearsed or not, it wasn't a bad effort, and it didn't miss by much. That's the second a episode in a row I'm facing Paz in a cup competition after beating them in the cup final of the Capital One Cup. About to make a change here. Since I was mentioning it. If there were something about it, actually. And before that, only like a few games before that, I had played pass in the league as well. So Liverpool will get the throw. This game is getting me awfully familiar with Crystal Palace for some reason. I don't know. And why. the cross is in. Care. Sturridge. Well, the goals to games ratio. And that's four 0 That should be and this is me through to remarkable finishing the semi final. Yeah, the semi-final. So this should be sending me to Wembley again. Oh, it's come in from a long way out, and from that angle, it's not always easy to finish. Defenders caught out by it in the uh, great attempt, uh, a clearance there from, to get in front of his man. from uh, Martin Kelly, who uh, basically kicked at air. So looking <laughs> for more at 4-0. Pizarro. <laughs> good, good job, Frank. Uh, Liverpool were foolish to let you go. Really trying to use the full width of the pitch here to make some progress. Speaking of Crystal Palace, I don't know if it's going to be a thing. Crystal Palace have a substitute. Kind of like really gone quiet. I thought, like, everyone was expecting someone to try and buy. Zaha from Palace this, led to a corner. this summer, but so far, no one's come in for him. Now, the window has only been open a few days, or at least I think it's open. Again, I think it's, I think it's open. I'm going to say the window is open. If it's not, then... I, I don't know. Teams are signing players. Like, I know July 1st is when all the free transfers will happen. Place to try and hit it now. What a good way to score. That's that's when that's gonna happen. But um, I think the window is open, so I'm gonna say it's get a touch. So with the window open, keep the ball out of his net. I think. A lot of the talk around Crystal Palace was, would they be able to keep hold of Wilfred Zah? Because, you know, he was playing so well for them this season. In the past. Now they've got a chance in this part of the pitch. Christian Benteke hadn't just joined Crystal Palace. I could see people, rumors linking him away. There probably are any. Now the countdown is to 10 minutes left. Because, well, this is football. Well, Benteke only spent one on season at Liverpool, so he was Benteke shipped goes. away, but that was for completely different reasons. Time nearly he up here. He never been at Liverpool to begin with. Forward a bit to their next game. And that's not saying anything well, bad on him. Arsenal. After that's this, always misconstrued. Uh, we, a few words spoken I'll say this right now. As a Liverpool fan, Christian Benteke is a great player. He's he is a good player for a Premier League team. They put that cross and he showed up for Crystal Palace. Without his goals, Crystal Palace could have easily gotten relegated. Easily. Like 
he was their top goal scorer. The problem with Benteke at Liverpool is they did we did not play a style a style of football that Christian Benteke would have thrived in. And that's lumping balls into the buck. Looking for for a target man. For some reason. Well, I bet he did better than that in training when they were going through this routine. His manager will be. Brendan Rodgers decided to bring Christian Benteke in. Despite the fact that it was Brendan Rodgers who got rid of Andy Carroll. Just one minute. For the exact reason. He did not fit our style. It wasn't because Andy Carroll kept getting injured, it, because we didn't play the style that needed a target man. We didn't need a target man mm -hmm. up front because we weren't lumping balls up to him. So. The football That's the reason. Challenge Cup, quarter final. Crystal Palace nil, Liverpool five. For anyone who's confused, and I'll say this: Christian Benteke would easily be a very good striker for for a team that does play that style, like. I'm trying to think of a good example. This is going to sound weird. Man United or Everton. Those two teams have shown how well they've played with big strikers. Man United this season was Zatan Ibrahimovic. He thrived at Manchester United. People didn't think he would do so well. That was partially down to Zlatan's natural talent. But, you know, he did thrive. He scored a good few header goals. And Everton, Benteke might be a good suitable replacement for Lukaku, who who also has been linked with a move away. But so far, I, I know the window's only been open three days. Still doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if the window's been open in three days or fifty days. It's, it's your thing. I'm just saying I haven't heard anything about. Hope. Lukaku leaving either. So, I mean, it seems like the only thing anyone wants to talk about is, is Antoine Griezmann and, and Lacazette and occasionally Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Like, and maybe Sa a little bit of Sanchez and Ozil in there as well. Also, Arsene Wenger has said. Those guys are going to stay. Well, until they sign new contracts, their stay is going to be very temporary. Because if they don't sign new contracts, their deal is up the ne next summer. Because they had 18 months left in January. he just gone. And if you do a little bit of math, that means they're down to about one year. And they're both over 23. They can go on a free. You won't get a single penny. So unless they are going to sign new contracts. You're going to sell them. Unless Wenger is completely stupid. But is he? Would he be that stupid? I mean he cashed in on Van Persie. He wouldn't. He. And he cashed in on her players before they ran out their contract. I guess we'll have to wait and see. The transfer window this season, this summer, I should say, is going to be interesting. And it's all going to come down to who, who gets their men and who don't get their men. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Joy. Smash the like button if you did subscribe if you're new. And until next time, I hope you all have a very, very nice day.